check the sound. Let's go. Okay, three people watching. Okay, three people watching. I think it's good. Go. On. I think it's good. Huh? So yeah. let's uh, start with giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth and who rule well. Peace and citations unto the Akim that is spread around the four corners of the earth, spreading this word of sincerity and the truth. Shalom. Come. Shalom. So we're back here with a Rotterdam in class lesson with the brothers from uh, GMS Holland and the brothers from uh, GMS uh, Germany. And what we want to go into today is uh, Isaiah 13, you know, mm -hmm. because we, as Great Millstone, we often speak about prophecy. You see, and that sets us uh, apart from these other camps because these other camps they know that they're Israelites, but they don't warn the people of the time that's going to come. You know, the impending uh, judgment that the Most High has. They're just uh, living their their life lavishly here, and then if you look at the IYC camp, for example, they like to do things military style, H O I military style. You no, know, but we from GMS, we just come with our rough garments. And we're guarded with, uh, as it says in Ephesians 6, you know, you got to be guarded with the word and the sword of Yahweh Shemayar with his armor. You don't have to be all military style. Of course, there has, everything has to be in decency and in order, you know, but not like how they do it, man, taking it overboard. So we... Hey, you, are, you on your phone? You on your phone? Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Turn off your Wi-Fi. Okay. Let it go on your uh, mobile internet because your stream is uh, lagging a lot. Okay. Now I put my hotspot on my phone, so I'm going to turn that off. Okay. Let me see. And now you froze up completely. Yeah. As soon as we started, uh, we pressed play, it started bugging, mm -hmm. eh? I already saw Satan creeping in. So, before it even, because Garshan's and his internet was bugging, but Garshan got it fixed up. He tried it too, but didn't work. Fucked up, man. Now, now the man is gone. Mm -hmm. Yes, probably pre uh, and then yeah. Yeah, man. So what uh, what Quatrezap was talking about, what Quatrezap was talking about was that all these camps so-called have their own way, their own style, which basically that is no problem as long as they stay in the doctrine of Yahabah Shemir Shai. Okay, there has to be one one word, one doctrine, man, not multiple doctrines, because that is not what this truth consists of. You back? Mm -hmm. You're still lagging, man. You're still lagging. Gosh, while he yeah. fixes his stuff, while he fixes his stuff, can you read um, Philippians? Two and two? Yeah. I got it, Ak. This is Philippians two. chapter two, verse two. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Yeah, man. Read on. <clears throat> Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Yeah, man. So let nothing be done in vainglory. So everything needs to be done decency and in order, like the brother was talking about. And everyone should be like-minded. 
But guess what? That is not going to be the case. There is going to be division. There is going to be strife. You know, but that is all the working of Satan. But you also have to understand that the elect is going to be going to have the hundred percent truth. But not everyone is going to be of the elect. It comes mm -hmm. up if you if you can turn off your Wi-Fi, man, then it will be fixed. Just turn off your Wi-Fi. It'll be on your uh, mobile internet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind that each esteem one another better than themselves. Okay, and that, that is that brotherliness, man. Okay. Let's let's say for example you are sleeping, but a brother needs your help. You get your you get your ass out of bed, man, to help that brother, man. Okay, you esteem that brother higher than your than your own needs, your own, you know, fulfilling your own ways. Put this brother before yourself, man. Okay. And concerning uh, uh the strife and vain glory, you have a lot of people that trying to get glory. But we know what happened with people that what happens to people that seek glory. Uh, if we look at um, if we look at uh, the book of Maccabees, you had Eleazar. Now the 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 glory had to go to um, to the Maccabean brothers. But guess what? This man he tried to steal the glory. Okay, which. And he ended up dying because of that, man. He ended up dying because he thought he, he wanted to grab the glory. He wanted to make a name for himself. Okay, Eleazar. Eleazar, he wanted to make a name for himself. He took two swords and he ran through a troop, was killing left and right. Okay, it was spectacular, right? Then he came under the elephant where the king was on. He stabbed the elephant, but the elephant landed on his ass. So he died. Basically, very stupid, man. He died very mm -hmm. stupid. So it's not a wise thing to look for vain glory, you know, because all praises and glory go to who? How about Shami Shai? Okay, that is who we glorify. That is who we praise and honor. It is not about us. We are mere vessels for this truth. Okay, and like the brother Kortasar was pointing out, you have different types of camps. Okay, that point out this truth, but everything has to be under the same doctrine, under the same mind, and there cannot, there should not be division. But guess what? It is prophecy that there is division. It's prophecy that there are going to be people that are doing things for strife, for vainglory, for their own belly. Okay. So yeah, man. I see. Hey, uh, cut us up. I see the stream is good mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So uh, you got it, man. You got it. And also, uh, one of the points that you're pointing out right now, uh, I believe in the book of Zechariah, where it speaks that some shall spring up uh, calling themselves uh, Jacob, others shall spring up calling themselves from the house of David, meaning that through through this truth, you're going to have, everybody is going to know their nationality, that you're going to have Israelites popping up, but still you're going to have a little bit of, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm a Levite, I'm a this, I'm a that, you know, there, there are going to be people that don't want to come in unity, they don't want to join camps, but the truth reached them, you know, they, mm -hmm. they heard through the men of the Lord that they are the Israelites, you know, and that the kingdom of heaven is for us, but yeah, man, uh, Israel is a stiff-necked people, so you got to deal with it, the most high, he, he turned his back onto us, but he gave us his uh, only begotten son, for, for repentance, you know, to for the rep remission of sins, actually. Okay. Gone. So the scripture that we wanted to go into the chapter is uh, Isaiah 13, where it speaks about the doom of Babylon. So, um, I don't know uh, who wants to start reading it. Yeah, That's I can one? read it, man. Okay, gone. Let me read, man. I never <laughs> read. Let me read Isaiah chapter 13, verse 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand. 
that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Okay, so uh, Tazawa, can you get me Matthew 22 and 9? And um, Gershom, uh, Jeremiah 51. Let me read 20, it again. 25, come. Okay. Isaiah 13 and 2. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Okay, so the banner, what is the banner? The banner is all these scriptures. Because that's what we're doing right now. We're lifting up the banner. We're, we're exalting our voice. We're blowing our voice as a trumpet in uh, the high mountain. And that high mountain represents America. You know, because America, they are in uh, rulership. You know, USA, they are the, the prophet that uh, comes with the blasphemous things, you know. So lift ye up a banner, is it, which is the scriptures, upon the high mountain. Because if you, the scripture also speak about um, ye... Ye destroy a mountain. How is a mountain uh, a destroyer? That is speaking about a rulership, a government, you know? Yeah, that government, that. God. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 20, uh, Jeremiah chapter 51, verse um, 25. Verse 25. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, said Yahweh. God. So how is a mountain a destroyer? No, it's speaking about the rulership. Because if you look at um, what they just had, you had uh, Putin and all these other countries, also with uh, Joe Biden sitting there as a dummy with a mask on in this uh, digital summit. You know, what is a summit? A summit is the pinnacle of a mountain. So it's the top the top people, the top rulers of their countries that are uh, having a, a sit down and speaking about important things, you know? Yeah, so it says, it says, uh, Jeremiah 51 and 25, Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, said Yahweh, which destroyest all the earth. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. God, you see, so uh, the Most High is prophesying against the mountain, and that mountain is Esau Edom, because they are the destroyer of the earth. They're destroying everything they, they put their, their claws on, you know. When you look at their, their cars, for example, it might look beautiful from the outside, but actually it's only pollution that it brings forth, you know. And in order for them to make that car, they have to mine, they have to uh, destroy certain uh, places in in. in in uh, Africa or wherever they get the resources. So they're destroyers of the earth, but the most high is gonna make them a burnt mountain. How? Through these ICBM missiles, you know, because the first time the most high he judged this earth with water, but this time he's gonna judge it with fire. Mm -hmm. God. Right. Did you have the, mm -hmm. the Matthews? Uh, it's the book of Matthew, chapter 22 and verse nine. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as he find, as he shall find fit to the marriage. Gone. So that's what we're doing. That's how we're lifting up this banner. We are going to the highways and byways and bidding people to the marriage, the marriage supper of the of the Lamb. And who's the Lamb? Yahweh Shai. See? Go. You want the Jeremiah? Which uh, scripture did you want from me? No, you just read it. It was uh, Jeremiah 51 and 25. Gone. 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 <laughs> Oh, you gave that to him. Yeah, I, I saw it marked here, and I gave I it to him already. Re I didn't even realize that that is what you asked him. I have a, I have a precept. Uh, him. Slack, yeah. Yeah, I knew it was Amos. But look it up real quick. This is Amos. Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5 verse 10. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. God, and those are the, the men of the of the Lord, the prophets, because they are rebuking at the gate. When you see uh, Israel walking uh, with blonde hair, if you see an uh, Israelite woman uh, letting her, 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 yeah, her body and her pussy lips, you know, camel toe, everything uh, shown. Then we are rebuking them, you know, 
like this is not how we're supposed to be dressed we are a royal people but now our people are uh, close to the ground they're they're so diminished that they don't have no self-respect anymore you know and yeah the and, men of the lord why, they're why are they being rebuked because we are lifting up the banner which yeah. in this banner in these scriptures you have instructions you have laws you have ways you have commandments that's why they are being rebuked man okay because they are walking contrary to the ways of the scriptures man okay this is the uh, second timothy four and two preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine so through mm -hmm. these scriptures through the lifting up of this book of this bible our people have to be corrected, man. Our people have to be rebuked, which a rebuke is a sharp correction, okay? A reproof is a milder correction, okay? And to correct is just the, the, the yeah, the softest form that you can have, basically, or the most basic form. But the rebuke is to sharp, to sharply correct, man. And that's why the scripture also says, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and spare none, mm -hmm. man. And that's what we can yeah, yeah, this is Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yeah, that's, that's a perfect precept because I already went to that also, because that's what we're doing, you know, through these uh, scriptures. This is the filter that you have to go through in order to be found righteous. You know, as uh, Job was uh, saying that I pray to Yahweh Hashem Yahushua that I may be found uh, innocent without guilt. You know, is that he be found righteous and how through keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. If you don't keep them, then you are not going to pass through this filter. You know, you're going to be caught up in this in this uh, uh, sieve, how you call it, filter, and then you're going to be burnt up. But this yeah. act that we're doing is an act of love. We, we are reproving and rebuking our people so that they return back to their one true power, you know? Yeah, man. But also it is a, always difficult. Uh, it is always difficult for these people to realize that it's actually an act of love, okay? Yeah. Because it's the truth. And the truth hurts, you see? Yeah. That's why they hate those men that are rebuking in the gate. They are being hated because they're telling you the truth. It's the same thing that you have two types of friends, okay? Let's say Garsham wants to be a rapper. And then, you know, me, Tazawa, and Kwataza, we chilling with Garsham, and Garsham is flowing, spitting some flows, right? But then it doesn't sound good, man. It's, you know, it doesn't sound good, man. And then mm -hmm. we be like, you know, you have two types of friends. You have one friend, he says, yo, stop chasing this dream, because this ain't going to work out, man. It is whack as hell. But the other friend, he will tell him, yeah, just keep going, man. Just keep going, man. You will get there. You will get there. But he's lying to him because it sounds like mm -hmm. shit. Okay? Now, we in, that are in the highways and byways, we are telling you the straight up uncut truth. Okay? Which, that you, which is that you are a fucking piece of shit. You are abominable in the sight of the Heavenly Father. And there is no middle way. Because people say, I've been out. I believe in God in my own way. Hey, that's no, that's no own way, man. We come straight, uncut to the gut. We telling you what it is, and that's yeah. why they hate us. Just like how Garsham would hate the friend that tells him you can't rap the shit. He would hate him like, hey, what the fuck, fuck this nigga, man? Everyone telling me, everyone is telling me I will get there one day. Yeah. But all of them dudes is lying. But yeah, then that one guy, people. he's telling him the truth. You see? Yeah. Yeah. You got a scripture. And we, and we, can't, we can't lie. We ourselves that are in the truth, we also get cut through the scriptures. You know, and when you get cut, you're like, oh, hey, I got to change that. Or else, you know, um, you can't uh, really get access to the complete wisdom, knowledge, or understanding. Because uh, if you keep having sin around you and in your life, then the most high he's going to give you a certain portion, but not um, yeah, your full potential, you see? So we ourselves were getting cut when we read the scriptures, man. Can you had a precept, Buck? Yeah, man. This is Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5. 
Open rebuke is better than secret love. John, yeah. and that's what uh, we are showing you. We are sh through this open rebuke, we are showing you love. That's better than secret love. You see, the scriptures are one hundred percent. But the thing is, because our people, uh, their mind is so so poisoned, and even us, once we were in this world, our our minds were so poisoned that it takes time in order for you to uh, let go of that. You know, in order to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. But once you once you start, you just uh, keep on going, man. And I see, I got some precepts here from An and Anarchy. This is Lamentations four and one. How is it the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out, out in the top of every street. Khan, and that's our people. Our people, they were beautiful gold. But now the most high he allowed for us to be brought low because we did it you know our forefathers they went off and then we are getting the judgment because uh, we are our forefathers in the reincarnation but the prophets the spirit of the prophets is subject unto the prophet so if you're a prophet now you're a prophet back then and it continues uh lamentations four and two the precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold how are they esteemed as earthen pictures? The work of the hands of the potter. Yeah, man, beautiful. Matthew 5 and 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Gone, and that's what they're doing. Because uh, people, they see us standing over there and they just get this eerie feeling about us because they see that we are different than them. And then the first thing they say, they like uh, this past Saturday, you know, uh, who was it? Araya. Araya, he, he doesn't hear very good, but one of the, the women that passed by, an Israelite woman, she said hello. But he turned his, his face because he, he can't hear her. But then she, she started to be all puffed up and prideful, be like, hey, uh, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you talking back to me, you know? She got all proud, but that's not how you're supposed to be to a man of the Lord, you know? You're supposed to shut up, first and foremost, you know? But then... Especially our, the exactly. So, these people, they think evil of us when when, when something happens, yeah, we're, we're not correct, you see? But that time is also going to come of the persecution, because that's what that scripture is talking about also. Man. And the last one, Matthew uh, 5 and 12, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Gone. So these are beautiful prophetic writings that we know that we're going to be persecute, persecuted, but there's going to be a reward waiting for you. You know, here it is up. And the brother right. Ragao, he's tuning in. Shalom. So this is the aftermath of lifting up the banner, man. This is what, what happens. This is what comes to pass. You will be hated, man. Okay? But guess what? It is the commandment of the Heavenly Father for us to go out in the highways and byways, for us to preach this word, man. You know the scriptures. You understand the scriptures. Get your ass outside, man. And preach. You this is the commandment. You are obligated to do so. Okay. So a thing that has to come into into play as a, you know, you dealing with with fruit, you dealing with men. Okay, men are, are checking your videos out. Here it is. If you see a man on your comment board for two, three years long, but he, he got no content on his channel, you need to start questioning him, like, what are you doing, man? Why ain't you teaching the word? You know the scriptures by now. You always pulling precepts on the live feed, man. Okay, so at a certain point, you have to tell them like, hey, it's time to, to do something, man. Time to work, man. Actually, the time to work is almost finished. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. but I can't join GMS. It has nothing to do with that. Okay, because we, we and, uh, you know, beginning with the apostles of Great Millstone, always point out camps that preach the same thing as us, but are not in Great Millstone or not a part of Great Millstone. We always reference those men that teach the same thing as us, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is the 100% truth. But guess what? Prepare thyself for temptation, man. When you come into this truth, 
when you start teaching, man, prepare yourself, man, because you will be hated. So I have a precept right mm -hmm. here. Let's go. This is Second Chronicles, chapter thirty-six, verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. Let me start at fifteen. And Yahweh, the Most High of their fathers, sent to them by his messengers, rising betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they marked the messengers of the Most High and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of Yahweh arose against his people till there was no remedy. Yep. And that's what they're doing. There's no new thing under the sun. So the things that they did back then, they're going to do again. You know, the, the exactly. mockers and scoffers, those people are back again. You know, they're going to uh, confront the men of the Lord. They're going to uh, not listen to the men of the Lord. But that's their part also, because in order for one third to be for or in order for an elect to be there, there has to be a, a, a great number that has to be uh, also uh, destroyed, actually. Because you can't you can't just have one poor elect. No, you have to have one third, and then the two third as an example. Like this is the way not to live, you know. The things that that they do are for an example to the righteous, and for the people that want to come to righteousness. Like hey, you see that thing that they're doing right there? That's abominable. We're not supposed to do that, you know. We're not gonna mm -hmm. enter into the, into the kingdom of heaven if you do that. So that's that's they are just playing their role. They came into their lot again. You see? That's right. Come on, read on. Verse 17. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the, of the Chaldees who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion upon young men no, or maiden, old men, or him that stupid for age. He gave them all into his hand. And if I can say something about that, you know, people want to point out all these people that are getting gunned down, all these jakes that are getting gunned gun down in the, in the streets. But why is it happening? Here is a prime example. The king yeah. of the Chaldees was, was um, triggered by the Most High to start killing old, young, uh, 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 full of age, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, crippled. Doesn't matter, man. Most of us are like, I let his ass loose on, on, on my people because they don't want to listen to the messengers. You want to mock the messengers. You want to scoff. Okay, you want to revile. You want to, what, what else did they do? You want to kill, misuse the prophets. Okay, that is not acceptable in the eyes of the Most High, man. Okay, so he will let the king that is ruling, he will let him loose on your ass, man. Through the cops, you get gunned down in the streets. Okay, judgment is being passed upon you niggas, man. And that's just what it is. Okay, so we ain't sitting there and be like, oh, Esau is so terrible. No, it's the most high that is terrible because he allows mm -hmm. Esau to do these things. You see, he allows yeah. Esau to do, um, how you say that, um, violently gun us down, man. Okay, <clears throat> for these people that are gonna violently gun down, they deserve it. Nobody perish being innocent, man. You see? Yeah. Can you get yeah. me uh, Jeremiah 11 and 11? That's what? Cool. I believe it's Jeremiah 11 and 11. Cool. This book of Jeremiah 11 and verse 11. And it says, Therefore this saith Yahweh, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though yeah. they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. You see, so it goes hand in hand because the Most High is sending this evil upon these people that don't want to listen to the words of Yahweh Shai. And I believe uh, somewhere above it or below it, it says, uh, pray not for them in that same uh, um, chapter. I think it's uh, Jeremiah 11 and 15. Verse 14. Oh. It says, uh, Jeremiah 11 and 14. Therefore, pray not thou for these, these people. Yep. Neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for yep. I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. You see, and that's why it might seem harsh that we, when we see these judgments are being passed, 
when uh, the cops are gunning down the so-called black man, who is actually the Israelite man, that we, we don't uh, lift up a prayer for them because it's their lot, it's their judgment because they are a wicked piece of shit. You know, they deserve that. As the brother was uh, talking about that, nobody perished being innocent. So he did something in order for him to receive this judgment. So when we see these things, we don't, we're not moved actually, you see? Come. So if you can read further in Isaiah 13. Yeah, man. This is Isaiah chapter 13. Shall I read uh, verse 2 again? No, just go to 3. Come. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 3. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I, I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. Uh, who's that speaking about? That's speaking about the angels. You know, the Most High is reserving his angels for the day of judgment and the day of wrath. Because first, he has to um, make the judgment be known. You know, like if you go off, if you don't keep the law, statutes, and commandments, you're going to be put to death. But then there has to be an executor. And those are the, the, the angels also. You know, you have e evil angels and you have good angels. So the evil angels, as it says in uh, Sirach 39, you know, it says uh, their beast first created for for uh, destruction or mm -hmm. roughly paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. Can you get it? Mm -hmm. Go. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Sirach 39, verse 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury they don't saw strokes. In the yep. time of destruction, they pull out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. God, appease the one, the wrath of the one that made him. And to appease means to be uh, put, put uh, how do you call it? Appease to make happy. Means to, appease to makes to, to turn away from wrath. If God. someone is angry and you appease him, that means you uh, calm him down. Yeah, exactly. That's the word I was looking for. So the, the wrath of the Most High is being calmed down by these uh, spirits that he has let loose. Be like, hey, get him. Get him real quick because he's that what he's doing is too much, you know. So the Most High, he's preparing his, his evil angels to do his bidding to level out the place. But then also the other angels are being prepared because Esau also, he's, he's, he's going to be taken down. You know, through these ICBM missiles, but also with Yahweh Shai and the angels that are going to come. Got the scripture. John, can you get me uh, Joel 3 and 11 also? John, uh, this is Psalms chapter 104, verse 4. Who make this angel spirits, his ministers a flame of fire. John, and the angels are just pure fire, pure energy. You see? When these angels come, they're, they're unstoppable. They're uh, celestial beings. You know, and we are merely terrestrial beings. So when they come, they're, they're unstoppable for uh, for Esau, for the enemy. Come on. Yeah, the Joel? Yeah, come on. Yeah. Let me read verse 4 first, because for, uh, Joel is a precept for verse 4. Go on. And I didn't read it yet. Okay, yep. Isaiah... Isaiah 13 and 4, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustered the host of the battle. God. So if you go into that word uh, mustered, it means to appoint, to avenge, and to visit. So the Lord of hosts, which is Yahweh, he He's going to visit the, these nations when they're going to battle each other because there's going to come a World War III in the uh, valley of the uh, troops, you know, Armageddon. So when that comes, then Yahweh Basham is going to visit them. He's going to punish them when they're going to be fighting and battling one another because that's what it says in the scriptures. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like a great people, a tumultuous noise, which means a, a, a roaring and... A, a tumult is um, different noises mingled together, you know? Yeah. And the scriptures prophesy about um, Armageddon. Okay, yep. Esau even uses it, but what does it actually mean? Armageddon goes back to the Hebrew word Armageddon, which means mountain of troops. 
Okay. Yeah. So where are these? Where is this great multitude are going to uh, are going to be gathered in uh, in the mountain? Not physically, but I would say here the noise of the mu multitude in the mountain. Okay. So Armageddon means mountain of truth, which is that valley. Okay. Valley of Yahweh Shapat, which is Yahweh is judgment, which is over there in the Middle East, which that's the place where Esau is being gathered as we speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. together with the other nations. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a prophecy that still needs to be fulfilled. And you see that it's it's being um, built up because you hear these wars and rumors of wars. You hear Russia is constantly um, uh, busy with America and they're trying to defend the, the, the Persian Gulf, you know, but after a while, the Most High is going to let it loose and they're going to be going head to head so that the Most High can visit them. You see, because as it says, as we just read, the Most High is going to appoint and avenge and, and visit them when they're going to be thinking to fight each other. Go on. When Joel? Yeah, the Joel. Go on. Go on. Uh, Joel. Can you get me Exodus 15 and 3 also to show that the Most High, he loves he loves the good battle? Which one do you want first? Uh, yeah, give me the Exodus first. Con, this is Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. Um, you want me to read it verbatim? No, I just read the. Uh, yeah, watch me, watch me. Con, Exodus 15, verse 3. The Lord Jehovah is a man of war. The Lord Jehovah is his name. Con, so Yahweh, he loves a good battle because the people, the Christians, they only say that uh, the Most High is all love. But what's it, what is it said in uh, Exodus, Exodus 15 and 3? What did he do with the Egyptians? You know, he killed them all. So the Most High is not only love. So these these times that are going to come, when these troops are going to gather together, the Most High is going to reveal himself to be a man of war to these other nations. You know? Come on, did you get it? Joel? This is Joel, chapter 3, verse 11. He's going to show... He's going to show uh, why before the name Yahweh was known among the people, he's going to show why he was being called Allah Shadja, Allah Shadja. Mm -hmm. yeah. which means terrible demon-like power. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also uh, what you was pointing out um, concerning, um, concerning um, Egypt, mm -hmm. like the scripture says, um, in Romans, Romans chapter 9, verse, uh, Around verse, 18, verse 17, I Romans 9 and 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So like the brother was talking about the Heavenly Father, is a man of war. He likes a good battle. He only raised up a whole nation, make it great and beautiful and full of gold, riches, technology, science, just to destroy it. Just to destroy it, man. Because where we was uh, after the camp, we was uh, discussing some things about the Greek Empire. The Greek Empire stole a lot of knowledge from the Egyptian Empire, man. And why did that knowledge pop up? Because it was necessary for it to become big so that the most they can could destroy it. Okay, that's why they contain that knowledge. That so-called science, as they say today, infrastructure, aqueduct, you know, all those yeah. those uh, uh, underground uh, gar gar um, garbage disposals, okay? Yeah. All those type of things come from the Egyptians. Also, um, uh, storage places for grain, and who came with that? that? That goes back to Joseph, man. You know, so our presence over there in Egypt led to a lot of inventions and a lot of things, just like how our presence over here in, in Babylon, New Babylon and, uh, you know, mainly America caused for a lot of a lot of uh, inventions to be made, man. Jake yeah. made it. Esau ran with it. OK, so that shows you, man, the most I only raised up Egypt to destroy it and to declare his name amongst his people, amongst Israel. 
in the same the same manner he's going to destroy america also because now america feels untouchable right all these other nations they're scared of america they they see america as this uh this beautiful whore but the most high he lifted her up so that he his power can be made known by taking her down her with her uh ICBM missiles and all abominations that, that she comes with. You see? That's right. And I have another scripture because you said that these Christians say um, it is uh, the most high is all love. This is Nahum chapter 1, verse 1. The burden of Nineveh. I knew you, were gonna, I knew you yeah. were gonna get that. That's the <laughs> yeah, man. That's the nail the burden of the that. Yeah. Done. The book of the vision of Nahum, the Alkashite. The Most High is jealous, and Yahweh revenge it. Yahweh revenge it, and is furious. Yahweh yeah. will take vengeance on his adversaries and reserve it wrath for his enemies. Yahweh yeah. is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. Yahweh had his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Yeah, the, so the whirlwind and the cloud and the dust of his feet that represents the chariots, you know, everywhere where the chariots go, that's where you see these 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 uh, phenomenons. That's what uh, the people of the world would call them, the UFOs and the, the clouds being in different shapes and stuff, size, uh, things like that. But then the Most High, he is jealous, he revenge it, you know, he is furious. So where's the love then? Now, the Most High is not only love. If he cre gave you the, the emotion of love, the emotion of sadness, the emotion of being mad, then did, don't you think that the Creator himself, he had to had an, have an idea or have to feel those things also in order for you to give it to you? Yeah. So, but because these are he, things simple. Mm -hmm. These are things simple. He thinks like, no, but those emotions are not a good thing to have. But the Heavenly Father has those emotions, but the thing is, he has it under control. Because at the same time, the scriptures speak about temperance. Temperance means self-control. The most I have self-control. If he didn't have that, we would have been destroyed already, man. Mm -hmm. You see, because the most I said, I will not turn back to my word. Have I said it, and shall it not be done? So the most I said, he had promised the land of Canaan to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he will not break that promise. But if he did not have temperance, he would have destroyed us all. And then we yeah. he would have broken his promise. So the Most High is very angry. The Most High has wrath. The Most High is jealous. But he has control over those emotions. You see? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful point. Go on. Mm. And I believe you had, the, you had the Joel uh, Gershon. Go on. This is Joel, chapter 3, verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Fitter, cause the mighty ones to come down, O Lord Jehovah. So the mighty ones, as we read in Isaiah 13 and 2, those are the mighty ones, those are the angels. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Read it again, Joel. Mm -hmm. This is Joel, chapter 3, verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. Heathen, gather yourself. Those are no, the yeah, right ones. Uh, no, but you, this is the yeah. I got it from uh, what was it, Apostle Tahar? He said the, the angels were the mighty ones that are going to come yeah, down. Right also, there. when yeah, but not the ones of from Joel. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves round about. Did it cause that mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. The heathens, the heathen need to be gathered. The, they need to be assembled. Okay. But hey, if you if you heard that that last part is um, said by Apostle Tar. God, yeah, because they're gonna assemble themselves. Of course, they're gonna fight one another. But then you're gonna have at the same time also you're gonna have uh, the man that's gonna come out the sea, which is Yahweh Shai, you know, and he's gonna come with the angels. Those are the mighty ones. You see, come, come. so that's when the Most High is going to interrupt that. He's going to show himself to be a, a man of war, the true man of war. Okay. Hey, you had a, a scripture, Kazawa? 
Yeah, just for the point that um, the Tazabah made. It's Deuteronomy 32 and verse 39. And it says, See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Oh, break it down. Just, kind of just speaking about the Heavenly Father, that he's the... Um, that he does that he's the perfect balance that he kills and makes alive that he wounds and he heals that he gives recompense but he delivers you from judgment also that he's not one side like these Christians or these other nations from the portraying us but he's that he's the ultimate balance that he controls himself and gives just a perfect and righteous judgment how it's supposed to be John as it says in the Proverbs 11 and 1 you know uh, the most high he he doesn't like an unjust balance you know yeah. Exactly. Yep. Go on. Can you continue with uh, Isaiah? Go on. Uh, Isaiah 13, verse uh, 5. They come down like they come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Go on. Okay, give me uh, Isaiah 34 and 1. Uh, Tazawa and Garsham, you can get me Jeremiah 50 and 25. Um, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 34 and verse, verse 1, you said, right? Go. Isaiah 34 and 1, and it says, come, come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is them the world and all things that come forth of it for the indignation no. of Yahweh. So like, yeah, yeah, read. Numbers two. For the indignation of Yahweh is upon all nations and his fury upon all the armies. He has utterly destroyed them and he has delivered them to the slaughter. Done. So the most high, when he comes with his indignation, is going to be upon all nations. Because which nation didn't have a hand in um, keeping the Israelites down and keeping the so-called blacks, the so-called Latinos, and the so-called Native Americans down? So these armies that are going to be destroyed, these people that are going to be destroyed are, are going to be of all nations, you see? And uh, the indignation, which means righteous anger, because the Most High, he has righteous anger toward these, these people, you know, as the brother just read in Nahum uh, um, th uh, 1, it was that Yahweh, he has enemies. And how are you an enemy of the Most High? You're an enemy if you are contrary unto him, if you are contrary unto his laws, if you are prideful, if you are um, making, uh, making females uh, mightier than men, you know, through your decrees, if you are um, bringing... Uh, LBGTQ, you know, uh, sodomy into this world. Yeah, but those are the enemies of the Most High, and all these other nations they have a part in that. You see, and the Most High is gonna he's gonna pour his righteous anger upon them. So that's that's what it's waiting for these people. But if you read, if you read Isaiah thirteen and five, it says, "Okay, read it again, Bob Kusha." Isaiah chapter thirteen and five. They come from a far country, from the end of of heaven. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Gone. The whole land. What does the whole land represent? That represents America. You know, and the weapons of his indignation, his we the weapons of his choice are the ICBM missiles or the intercontinental ballistic missiles. So that's what he's going to use to bring uh, America down. You know, and uh, Gashom, you had a precept. I have the Jeremiah and also have another scripture. Um, but you have Jeremiah 50? Yeah, 15, 25. This is Jeremiah. What? Yeah, read it, read it. And this is Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 25. The Lord Jehovah has opened his armory and has brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For this is the work of the Lord Jehovah, the power of hosts. In the land of the Chaldeans. Cool. So the Chaldeans, if you look at the Chaldeans, they were the, the wise of the land. And who are the wise of the land right now? Those are the elites, you know. 
the so-called um, Bilderbergs, Gettys, Rothschilds, you know, those people, they really control what is happening in the world. So that's why they are the modern day Chaldeans. And when it says the, the Lord, he had opened his armory, it's like when you go into your closet, you're like, you open up your closet, you're like, hmm, what should I wear today? And that's the, the way the most high he looked at the, the ways he could destroy this place. But then his weapon of choice was the ICBM missiles through fire. You see, I believe it, what does it uh, say? Isaiah 54, I created the Smith. Yeah. Okay, get that. This is Isaiah chapter 54 for 16. Behold, I have created a smith to blow the coals in the fire and to bring it forth an instrument for his work. And I've created the waster to destroy. Good. So what is a, a, a smith? A smith is somebody that makes weapons. You know, he forges a weapon. But who are the modern day smiths? Those are the, the, um, the scientists, you know, because what did they create? They created the intercontinental ballistic missiles. They created the nuclear missiles. And that's what these other nations uh, feel prideful about. When you look at Korea and uh, China, when they, they make a, a new bomb, then they, they show it to the whole world like, hey, this is our new creation, you know? So that, that also goes into the scripture where it says, let the weak say I'm strong. How? Because they themselves also have these uh, weapons of mass destruction. You see, but actually it's the most high who put it in their spirit to create it so that he can use it to destroy themselves. See? Come. Okay, continue in uh, Isaiah 13. Oh, you don't want uh, a couple more scriptures on the missiles? Oh, yeah, you could, we could go into that. That's prophecy. It needs to come. It's yeah, I don't best. know how you want to go over Isaiah 13. Like you want to go over it uh, globally or you know touch mm -hmm. uh, yeah globally because we need to go you all break the way down to, right? you, you just break down that is that is talking about the missiles the weapons of his indignation mm -hmm. which the Jeremiah was good you know I also have another he, he has his weapon of choice is that missile yeah okay yeah. but the up and coming <laughs> war is gonna be uh is gonna be you know fought with missiles and all these movies be showing you this nowadays man no. okay this is isaiah 9 and 5 for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood but God, this so what does that, that mean every it's like a, so what does that mean every every war is fought with confused noise meaning when people are fighting if you look at uh, 300 for example i watched that uh, last week you see Bloods uh, spattering all over the place, you know, people with blades and with knives and with spears and, you know, arrows and stuff all over, fly, flying all over the place. People chopping up horses while uh, the rider is still on it. You know, those are confused noise. Okay? So though, that's that's the battle how it used to be. But this new battle is going to be with what? But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. With burning and with fuel of fire, that that signifies that it's going to be with uh, nuclear um, flames. You see, yeah. and who's going to be the fuel for the flames? That's going to be the people. You know, the wicked people. They're going to be burnt up. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, going to preach it also. Go. This is Malachi the four verse one. For behold, the day come they shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that come shall burn them up, saith Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root uh, nor branch. Go on. Can you read it again, Babak Yeah. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 4, and verse 1. For behold, the day come that shall burn as an oven. And God, so the, the day cometh. They come it that shall burn as an oven. So when the Most High is gonna send the sun, it's not gonna be peachy and all flowers and rainbows and no, it's gonna be heat. It's gonna burn as an oven, as the scriptures say. That's the prophecy. Mm -hmm. God. 
and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stopped. All the proud and all the wickedly that do wickedly. And who's the most proud, prideful right now? That's America. That's Esau Edom, you know, because his, his spirit is, is proud. His spirit is lifted up within him. That's how the Most High made him. He made him as the evil machine. You can't, you can't tell him to be kind or uh, mold him to be kind. No, that's what he's created to be. He's created to be prideful and wicked and upside down. Go on. Go ahead. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, um, save the Lord of hosts, that it shall be so that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Gone. So the 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 starring the head cast of this whole um 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 yeah movie that is, is being played right now is Jacob versus Esau. It's the good versus the evil. But these two thirds of our people are wicked. Also, two thirds of our people are gonna be joined onto Esau and these other nations also. So that's why when that day is gonna come, that's gonna burn as an oven these people have to be swept away also need a root uh, has to be has to be found so just like how sodom and gomorrah got got um got destroyed that's how uh this this rulership is going to be destroyed also and the people with it you know as it says in revelations 18 within one hour america is going to be destroyed you want so that you could yeah you can get it because it's revelation it took, Oh, with the quickness thereof, come. <laughs> yeah, he's not even allowed to finish his sentence. Okay. <laughs> no, because because uh, Revelations 18, it speaks about how everything is going to be destroyed within one hour, right? But it took them so many years to build it up, you know. But the most high is like to hell with that. Let's just it's 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 enough, you know. Enough is enough, and within one hour is going to be destroyed, and people are going to look at uh, this great country. Like, hey, is this the man that made everybody to kneel and to bow down before him? But the Most High is going to destroy him. That's how the Most High is going to make his 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 fury and his presence and his his uh, his power made known. God, okay, give me that in the Revelation. This is Revelation chapter eighteen, starting off at verse sixteen, and saying, "Alas, alas, the great city." that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Yep, that's speaking about Babylon because uh, America is the modern day Babylon. Because if you go into those, uh, what was it? Those three spirits, you know, you have uh, America is their military might. You have uh, Britain, that's their uh, monetary uh, station. And then you have their spiritual, uh, London, Tawada. And then you have uh, Vatican, the Vatican uh, City. That's where they do their spiritual worshiping. You know, their Satan worshiping. So, if you go to to Vatican City, you see that they always wear uh, scarlet and purple. You know, and that they have gold, and that gold is is our gold actually. What they stole and that they use. You know, that they mold for for their worshiping. You see, so that's how you see that. Uh, America, which is linked to these two other countries, which is just Esau's uh, total empire structure uh, separated because they don't have everything stationed in America. They don't have everything stationed in London. They don't have everything in, in Vatican City. But through these three, they rule this, this earth. That's their empire. You see? But America is going to be destroyed within one hour because that's that great merchant city. Because everybody's doing, uh, making deals with America, you know, because everything is going to, it's imported through America. America doesn't really produce too many things. Go on. Um, um, verse 17. For in one hour, so great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ship and sailors and as many as stray by sea to the far off. And cried when they when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, "What city is like unto this great city?" Yeah, that's what they always said, right? America, the, to get the American dream, the 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 land of uh, promises. That's how they see America. Every other nation goes to New York, goes to uh, America to gain riches because their own country, in their own country, they're poor. 
So these merchants, they're going to stand afar off, see the smoke uh, uh, ascending, and they're going to be like, what city was great like her? They're going to mourn for her. But afterwards, you know, it's going to be done away with. They're, they're going to move on. Everybody's going to go to their own country and be like, okay, to hell with her. Go. Can you read uh, Isaiah? Go. Isaiah. Did you want to get did you want uh -huh. to get more ICBM scriptures? No, 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 scriptures? I'm good. I'm good. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm I was actually meditating upon this other thing. Because you be um uh, you was constantly saying two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. And uh um Garsham spoke about it. Yeah, he sparked a thought in my in my head uh earlier this week, which you know um we say two thirds because they are the prime examples, and you're gonna have people in that two thirds state of mind across the whole earth. Okay, but the Zechariah thirteen and nine, you know, two two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Those two thirds are in the land of America, because it re refers to one land. But when we speak about two thirds, we really refer to people that are in the same mind state as those people those two-thirds in america okay mm -hmm. you don't want to be like a two-third what does that mean you don't want to be like that person that is a setup to be destroyed now the scriptures speak about that which i have that scripture right here which is first corinthians chapter 16 verse um verse 21 uh verse 22 if any man love not the lord jehovah shai let him be Anatema, Aranata. Okay, so you have to understand and know what that uh, Anatema, uh, Maranata means. If you don't love Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, that is what you will be. Okay, now if you look up the thing like Garsham is doing instantly, he's looking it up, it means that you are set up for judgment, man. Okay, yeah, you are set up for judgment. Because it, what it really goes into, um, uh, anathema goes into to be laid up, to be set up. And uh, ma maranata means when the Lord comes back, comes back to do what? To do his judgment. Okay. So if you are a two-third or if you are acting like a two-third, okay, you might say, oh, two-thirds only in America. I'm not in America. Okay. You mm -hmm. are. Anatema Maranata. <laughs> you want that? You want that? It's the same thing. You are a person that is set up for judgment because you don't love Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You don't love his word. You don't, you don't like his prophets. You don't like his men. Which that equals not liking Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Know that they are not hating you, but it hated me before you. You see? Mm -hmm. He that hated, he that despised you, despised me. He that despised me, despised him that sent me. Okay, so this is the, this is the the thing that really goes into it. And um, I was thinking about bringing it out, but then I was like, now nah, let him talk. But then he still I said, like, you. yeah, I was. Say something? <laughs> anyway, yeah, man, real quick, man, that that's a lesson in itself, actually. But uh, yeah. Go Just real quick. You want me to read on? Go on. So um, verse 6, Isaiah 13 and 6. How he, for the day of the Lord, is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Yep. So if I can yep. say something about that, because yep. it might seem like Esau is in control, but Esau is everything but in control, man. Okay, Esau ain't doing shit. The Heavenly Father is preparing everything. The Heavenly Father has given them the blueprint on how to make these ICBM missiles. That's why the, the, the scripture that we just read concerning the Smith, the Heavenly Father has set them up. The Heavenly Father has given that wisdom, knowledge, knowledge and understanding unto that Smith. You know, which this is a represent, uh, it's a, uh, I'll call that, it repeats, history is being repeated again, just like how these Egyptians received the blueprints from the Heavenly Father how to become su such a great nation. These were a bunch of Hamites, man. Okay? These were a bunch of Hamites. They had to be set up to be become the first world rulership 
the first world power dominance, okay, starting off with Nimrod, okay, the Tower of Babel, that it was all Ham, man. You see, Shem was still growing. So the Heavenly Father gives you these things, gives you this, these, these, um, this equipment. But it's really the Heavenly Father that's doing it. It's not, it's not, it's not Esau. But guess what? Esau thinks that he is the most high, that he is like the most high, that he creates all these things. But the Heavenly Father just gives it. Okay? Nothing, you cannot, you cannot receive anything unless the Heavenly Father ordains it. Mm. Okay, whether it's wisdom, riches, poverty, pain, healing. Okay, it doesn't matter, man. You might you you might go to the best herbalists upon the planet Earth, you know, to get cured by herbs. But if the most I want you to stay sick, you stay sick, my man. You see, that's why the Book of Wisdom of Solomon, I believe, it's Wisdom of Solomon. It says it was needed, mollifying plaster, or a healing herb that brought us um, that healed me. But it was the Most High that did it. Okay, now the Most High might lead you towards these herbs. He'd be like, nah, I ain't gonna heal you just like that. Okay, I ain't gonna heal you just like that. Listen to this man. But what What if you proud? What if you are a proud man? The most I guide you to a man, but you too proud to accept that what he says is correct. That's a test right there, man. He has the medicine. You want to take it or not? Do you believe him or not? If not, you're not going to get healed, my man. Work on your pride, you see? That's why it also says, um, honor the physician. Honor the physician, my man. Okay, so um, Isaiah 13 and 7. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. Yep. And that happens, man. That, that's what you see in these movies. Mm -hmm. When... When the destruction of America is being announced, we uh, uh, an asteroid is coming towards America. We have 20 minutes to live. All people is going crazy, man. Buck wild. Their hearts is melting. They they losing it, man, because the destruction is at hand. That's how it's going to be also when these missiles is being shot towards America. Okay? Of course, first, America is going to keep it silent. Like um, trying to intercept or intervene these missiles, but at at a certain point, you know, it's gonna be broadcasted worldwide, man. That there's millions of missiles go going towards America, man. This will be worldwide known, man. Okay, and people is gonna lose it, man. Verse eight, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travail it. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Yeah, man. So they're going to be scared like the brother was speaking about, you know. Sirens all over the place. But then usually you hear sirens and it's like, this is a test. This is a test. But this one's going to be like, yeah. this is not a test. So people are going to be <laughs> running, seeking shelter and stuff like that. But no, man, the most highest judgment is going to come to pass just like how it happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, America is spiritually uh, Egypt, Sodom and Egypt right now. So they also have to go. You see? Uh, right. Let me see. Can you get me, what was it? Ezekiel 7 and 17. I have it. Ezekiel 7 yeah. and 17. All hands shall be feeble and all knees shall be weak as water. Yeah, they're going to be scared shitless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's beautiful. All hands is gonna be weak as water, man. Yeah, water can't hold anything. Water, you, you know, you exactly. I was it trying doesn't... to break I was meditating up on, on an example, but it, it was only in my mind. Yeah. It's like water can't if you have anything. if you have Fantastic Four, right? You have this guy that has uh flame on, you know, he's still mm -hmm. solid. You give him something, he might melt it. But if you had something like an Aquaman, somebody that's made out of water, and you tell him, hold this, it's going to pass through his hands. Yeah. It drops. It drops it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Water can only hold a, a, a certain amount of things. 
But the majority of things water cannot hold, man. Yeah. It needs to contain um, air. Verse 18. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon their heads. Yeah, that goes into being um, in a mourning state. You know, sack, sackcloth is going to cover them, going to put ashes on their heads. That what you, that's what you do when you're mourning. You see? Yeah. But that's what Jake, Jake is going to do that, man. Not physically, but Jake is going to mourn for America, man, because these, you have Jake's, they are in love with America, man. Mm -hmm. They cannot see that that place has to be destroyed, man. They don't even see that. That place has to go, man. But Jake don't want to see it. Jake is in love, man. That's why when they go, when America goes to war, Jake is even like, get it, let's get these fucking, uh, what, um, uh, these, um, uh, these Japs, let's get these Japs. Yeah. Or, um, that was in the time of, uh, Pearl Harbor, right? Let's get these mm -hmm. Japs. And, um, Hey man, also concerning these these Arabs, man, they they start acting like the damn devil themselves, man. Yeah. Stupid as hell. Yeah, for fighting for our country, our country, yeah. where they're gunning you down left and right. Go. Mm. Cool. Got Isaiah. So going back, Isaiah thirteen and uh, nine. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof, thereof out of it. Yeah, man. So, yeah, they don't actually need explanation. The Most High, we, we already went through that the Most High is not only love. The Most High also has anger and, and indigna weapons of indignation of his choice. You know, and that's what's going to come to America. So with his anger, he's going to lay the place desolate. That it's not, it's only gonna be inhabitable for what was it for desert uh, creatures, you know, yeah. and it's gonna exactly. be continual smoke going up in that uh, region, you know. So, yeah, but that's that what was, I was saying. Uh, that was that's what I was actually waiting for for you to go into that desolation, man, because the word desert, desert comes from the word desolation, okay. Yeah. Desert, what is a desert? Nothing is there, nothing grows there. The are there. It's yeah. going to be nothing, man. It's going to be dust because the scriptures speak about how the elements is going to uh, uh, um, gonna burn. Mm -hmm. The elements is going to burn, man. Okay. With fervent heat. So melt, see, yeah, that was it. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. So mm -hmm. all these structures, all these places, it's just going to turn into dust, man. It's not going to be any remains like, for example, in that movie Maze Runner. More Mad Max. You see that nuclear war has been, but there are still some structures standing. That there will be none, man. Yeah. Yeah. Why you think it's two hundred million? All these places is gonna be burned to the foundation thereof, man. And even beyond that, you see, it's not gonna stand, man. It ha all has to go, so it turns into dust. So that whole place is gonna be a desolation. It's gonna be a desert. Desert doesn't have vegetation desert doesn't have plants grow uh, you know uh, greens nah man mm. all of that is gonna go man okay yeah. it's beautiful that you said that because uh, i was watching a video of apostle orion love and he said also it's gonna be 200 million but it's not gonna be 200 million rockets or, or, or missiles why because like the brother just explained you have the warhead and that in itself contains uh multiple uh uh, missiles in it so it goes yeah. up in the in the uh, atmosphere and then when it comes down it's it's not going to be one missile it's going to be a whole bunch of them you know? exactly warheads man and uh back in the days they had um these type of missiles and they called them cluster bombs plus it because that's where the whole um the whole idea comes from a cluster bomb would be one bomb but it detonates in mid-air and becomes a lot of bombs like it's like a bomb full of grenades, you see. That's a cluster bomb. So then um, it it uh, it detonates on multiple spots, like it's multiple missiles, but it's actually just one bomb. Okay, but it has multiple, yeah, targets. Uh, uh come multiple targets come out of it. Yeah, man. 
So that's that's the same thing that is going to be with the missiles. God. Okay, get me Isaiah 54 and 16 and 17. Hope you show. Isaiah 64. Uh, Salakia 54. I got it. And um, uh, got some. Okay, get me Job 33 and 15 and 16. Job 33. You already read 54. that Isaiah 54. Yeah. Uh, that's, that was only all oh, 16 or oh, select. Okay, okay, give me 17. Job 33. You want 17 also and Isaiah 54? Yeah, read 17, Bob Kasha. Let me see what that goes into. And I, I thought you called it, but I can read it. No, they called 16. 17 goes into something else. Yes. Okay. okay. If you want to read something, read read Jeremiah 50 and 9, because I wanted to read that earlier, but I left it. So Okay. Now it goes back back into the missiles, so it's good to point that one out because we mm -hmm. we we was talking about the warheads. Now, usually, warheads would bump into each other. You know, some warheads would uh, would um, be detonated in mid air, but they, with the with these missiles, with these warheads, it's not going to be the case because why? The Most High has control over these missiles, man. It also says that in um, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 39, give me that, uh, Garsham, Ezekiel chapter 39, and you can start at verse 2. I'll start at verse 1 and read until 3. You can read, that, read Jeremiah first, actually. Hmm. Is Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 9. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. And they shall set themselves in array against her. Yeah, from so the... what does it mean that they set themselves in array? They point their missiles towards it, man. You know, the mm -hmm. missiles is it's like this. <laughs> Boom, steady. Keep it there until e uh, until Esau in America fucks the shit up. Hey, fire that shit, man. Done. Not, it doesn't button. have to be set up yet. No, man. The missile silo opens and it's done, man. Coordinates, everything is already in check, man. It's already in place. It's just one button, done. Okay? okay. Now, Putin was talking about America that um, they was calling Putin the real threat. And he said, how am I the real threat? If America has missiles pointed towards Russia from all kinds of angles, man. Mm. Now, all those missiles is pointing towards America as we speak, man. Okay? Mm. That is all those nations that are setting themselves in array against America. Read on. From thence she shall be taken. The arrows shall be as... Um, it's like the arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. Yeah, man. Now, this is the point. None shall return in vain. So, like an uh, uh, an expert man, when he shoots uh, uh, the bow, it's going to hit his target, man. It's not going to be, be intercepted or whatever, man. Okay? So, none of these missiles is going to bump into each other. They are all going to hit that target. And what is the reason? Ize uh, Ezekiel 39. Okay. Ezekiel 39, verse 1. Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus said the Lord Jehovah, Power, behold, I'm against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Okay, now Meshach and Tubal and Gog are actually sons of Japheth. Okay, that's something you have to realize, but this is referring to the people that are inhabiting that land as we speak, man, which is Russia. Okay, the eastern parts of Europe is being inhabited by these Russian Edomites. So the Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father has a prophecy awaiting them, which is that they are going to come out of that land, go to war, set their missiles in array, shoot them against America, because the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai wants that to happen. Okay, that's why it says in Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 4, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And I will bring thee forth. So it says, I will bring thee forth. That's that spirit that is 
coming from the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is arranging everything. He's allowing all these things to be set up. Okay? It says, And I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Now, what, what does that represent? These nuclear missiles, man. Okay, I remember three, two, three years ago, um, Russia had a commercial with all kinds of missiles in it, man. Satan II missile, the inter, uh, uh, the inter uh, continental ballistic missile that shoots over, that can reach uh, uh, America in less than an hour. Then you have the supersonic <coughs> missile. You have this uh, nuclear missile that goes underwater and becomes like a torpedo. Okay, they showed you this in this uh, in this Russian commercial, man. It was crazy. Okay, <coughs> now that's the most I. Uh, uh, showing forth the strength and the power that he is going to uh, uh, unleash upon America through Gog and Magog. Okay, back in uh, Ezekiel. Con Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 2. And I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee and will cause thee to come up from the north part and I will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. Okay, so we just read that Strong nations will come from the north. That represents Russia. Russia will come down upon um, upon America. Okay, that is that northern country that is coming. Um, and I will leave. But the sixth part within the represents that the sixth part of the military forces of Russia is gonna stay in in Russia itself. Read on. Verse 3, and I will smite thy bow out of thy hand, out of thy left hand, I will cause an arrows to fall out of the right hand. You see, I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause an arrows to fall out of thy right hand, which that represents that the most high is gonna take control over it, man. So even though they set their arrows in array, their 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 um nuclear missiles is pointing uh at America on certain locations, certain coordinates. The Heavenly Father smites that missile out of their hand and he guides it wheresoever he wants. The Heavenly Father is going to coordinate this whole this whole um, troop of, like the book of, um, I believe, Joel, the book of Joel, mm -hmm. chapter 2 speaks about horsemen coming mm -hmm. down upon, uh, upon America, man, leaping yeah, over the wall. That's how these horsemen... Huh? I have that for you. Done. That's how these missiles is going to come upon America, man. The Heavenly Father is guiding them. Just like how the Heavenly Father is setting up this whole event, the Heavenly Father is also guiding when the, ev when the event is taking place. These missiles is going to be guided, man. And they are not going to be destroyed in midair. You don't have to go into the jewel because that's a breakdown in itself. So... Um, uh, uh, caught this up. You asked another precept. Don't, didn't you want to have um, Romans 5 and 9? That's good. For um, Isaiah. I, I had a Job 33 and 15. Did you read that? No. Uh, Gershom, I believe you had it. You want a Job 33 and? 15. 15. So Job chapter 33. Verse 15, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon man, and slumbers upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Oh, and so that's also uh, going into what the brother Tazaba said, that the Most High puts it in um, the Russians, their mind, to do these things. Just like how the Most High, he hardened the Pharaoh, his heart, just only for him to let his, his, his greatness be shown by defeating him. That's how the Most High he also controls these modern day kings, you know, through uh, programming them in their sleep. Go on. Yeah, right. Romans, I believe. Yeah, Romans 5 and 9. Romans 5 and 9. Uh, 
but why though? <laughs> bogus precept? No, it's not bogus. Let me read mm. Isaiah 13 and 9 again. Behold, the day of Yahweh cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners there out of it. Okay, Romans 9, 5 and 9. Uh, let me start at um, 7. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet free adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But the most I commanded is love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Yahushua died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. So because Yahushua took away our sins, we are we aren't sinners no more. Okay, so it says the Heavenly Father is going to destroy the sinners out of it. So as long as we cling on to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, we are not a part of those sinners. Because you might have someone that says, like, oh, we all sinners, so we're all going to get destroyed? Nah, man. When you are, uh, uh, you know, when you believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, those sins are covered. Okay? Those sins are covered, so you will not be of the, of the group that will be... Uh, become part of the desolation will become part of the dust of the desert okay because you you believe in Yahweh Shai. Okay. Okay, Isaiah 13 and 10 for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light the sun shall be darkened in his going forth and the moon shall not cause their light to shine God, so this is uh, actually a double fold because of the continual smoke that is going to come up after the desolation, you know, there's not there's going to be a thick cloud uh, going up from America. That's that's the the first part, and the second part is that these elites they're not going to have any wisdom, any might in their mind, uh, any might in their hand anymore, because those are the modern day Chaldeans, right? And what do Chaldeans do? They uh, foresee things. They go to their 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 uh, groves. They go to their glass ball to their black mirrors. But in those times, everything is going to be complete darkness. Their their spirits, the left hand side, is going to leave them because the Most High is going to is going to remove that from them. You see? Uh, okay, you get me Isaiah sixty and two. Or, yeah, I'm already here myself. Yeah, got it. Go on. From Isaiah to 16, verse 2. For behold, the darkness 16. shall come. Yeah, he, he got the right one. He got the right yeah, one. But it sounds darkness. like he said 16. Also, just yeah. now, it sounded like he said 15 instead of Jeremiah 15. It okay. Sounds like 15. Now it looks, sound, sounded like 16. Yeah. So it's Isaiah to 16. Verse 2, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But Yahweh shall, shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. God, so there's going to be great darkness, meaning that these people, they're not going to know what's, what's, what's happening around them, you know, because once they were following America, they were settled in how, how to deal with her. But now America is gone. And then, okay, what are they going to do now? You know, actually, these these elites they think that after the 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 missiles are going to drop because they are going to go into their bunkers and stuff like that. They're going to hide themselves. They think that after the, out of the ashes they're going to build their new world order, but that's not going to be, man, because the Most High is going to put an end to that. You know, he's going to pick them up. He's going to round them up when uh, the bombs have hit. And then all the elites are going to be slapped into change. And the glory is going to be seen upon thee. How? Because the men of the Lord, they're going to have spiritual power, you see, at that time to do these great things. It's not, it's not, that's how the Most High is going to uh, show his glory as we were just going into. You know, the Most High, he loves, he likes a good war. And he also is going to show the, the his magnificence through his men. You know, the ones that do keep the last judges and commandments, the one that don't, uh, that aren't sinners, as we just went into also. So if you're not a sinner, the Most High is going to, Yarotaza, 
let his glory rest upon you. You see? Go. Yeah. Isaiah, Isaiah 13. Yeah, you want to go on? Amos 5 and 18. Okay. Let's get it. I grab it. Amos 5 and 18. Go. <clears throat> this is Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for thee? It's like, well, what end is it for you? Yep. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. So really, man, the darkness is going to be upon the people. So everyone is going to go fuck wild. Everyone is going to go crazy, man. Okay. They are gonna be in a in, in 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 a type of mind state that they are not right, man. If you would see a person, like if you would take a, a, a an a, um, apocalyptic mind state person and put him in this world now, like how we are living right now, he would get his ass locked up. He would go in this uh, street fest, man, because he's yeah. gone, man. He kills left and right. He he's in survival mode. Okay, so you have. Christians that be saying, yeah, the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. You don't want to be in the day of the Lord, man, because you're going to run from a bear, you know, spiritually speaking, par parabolically speaking, and you're not going to um, you're not going to be delivered, man. Like it says, verse 19, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into a house and leaned his hand on a wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the yeah. day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. You see, so there's no escape, man. Yahweh Shemel Shai is going to do his marvelous work. He's going to come with his missiles. But next to those missiles, he's going to come with his chariots. He's going to come with fearsome beasts. Yesterday, I was watching a documentary of the Yeti, man. You know, so-called Bigfoot. I was, wa uh, uh, you know, watching a documentary, uh, documentary on that. And um, the people, I, I'm still kind of researching, not uh, not even the the big food. I'm not even researching that. I was just, you know, seeing like what is it about. But the people that speak on it, their name is called sharp sharpa. Uh, actually, the sharpai, but in their uh, language, you say sharpa, which shar is Hebrew and pa is also Hebrew. So I was like, okay, suspicious. Plus, these people live in the in the um, how you call these mountains close to Mount Everest. They live close to Mount Everest. They can actually see Mount Everest. Okay, Nepal, uh, mm -hmm. which Nepal is is probably also Hebrew. Hey, I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. I, I just got like uh, you know the tinkling feeling, like hey, something's going on over here. So I still have to research that. But uh, beasts like that, man. The heavenly Father is about to unleash. You know, animals upon the planet Earth, like, you know, call them out of the rocks and out of the places, uh, you know, where Esau has never been, man. Okay, they was flying over uh, these mountains and they said, Esau, they said, man has never touched, uh, set foot on these places over here. So how do we know whether what kind of beast is living there? That's what they said. So, yeah, and that's true, man. Plus, if you have animals that are very... Um, Sly, like they don't, they don't want want you to see them. They don't, they will not get caught. They see you, man, and you will never find out that they even exist. And Yahweh Hashem Yahusha is about to unleash them upon the earth. So you escape that missile, you escape famine. Beast is gonna tear you apart, man, and you don't know what what what's gonna hit you. And what they said in that documentary, they spoke about their encounters, people that. Looked at looked the beast straight in the eye. They said they they um they said um this animal has magical powers. And then Esau came with the science um and said like it it's nothing it has nothing to do with magical powers. This animal is so strong, 
just like a gorilla, a silverback gorilla. If he comes towards you, if he if he charges towards you, you just freeze, man. You just freeze out of fear. That's what it was. So they described it as magical powers. He can make you freeze and do nothing. But it's just his strength that comes towards you that makes you freeze the fuck up, man, until he's dead. You in the spirit world. <laughs> that's how it goes. That's how it's gonna go also with these people, man. Freeze, yeah. freeze, shook up, and they in the spirit world, man. You're done. <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah, man. That's what I wanted to uh, bring out real quick. Back to Isaiah. Okay. What you want to do? The whole thing, or uh, we gonna do it in two parts? Um, we can do it in two parts if you want, because yeah, mainly I wanted to go through everything uh, till twenty two. But yeah, there's so much meat, you know. We yeah, to, I think uh, it's better to do it in two parts because uh, mm -hmm. this was basically going into the missiles, mm -hmm. and then it goes into uh, the missiles again. But the more the um, let me see, more the what happens after the missiles. Yeah, and during it. So let's read until um, until um, eleven, okay? Oh, yeah, and then we start at twelve uh, next time in the next lesson. Yeah, because you didn't name this lesson either. Um, I just now did it because oh. you, you can put you can put the name like um, um, the lesson. I put number fourteen. Now I'm like, hey, wait a second, I do got a title, so I just put it in there so now people can read what what uh, title, what chapter it is. So it is Isaiah 13, Breakdown, that's how I named it. Uh, verse 10, for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in its gold forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arro arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Oh, yeah, and the, the arrogancy of the pr proud, who is the, the prideful, that's Esau. Yeah, it? man. So the Most High is going to bring him down, the arrogancy that he has, because this man is so arrogant that he goes in all these countries to tell them how to uh, lead their life. To tell them how to rule over their women, you know. Right. But that that's all gonna be uh, done away with. The most high is added off, you know. And that time is <laughs> where we're going towards right now. It's like, yeah. And also, I'm I'm looking at the brothers like you know we're passionately speaking about the destruction, bombs dropping here, people dying, and people must be looking at us like, why are these men not afraid? Why do they like speaking about that that passionately? That's because we have faith. We have hope in salvation that they are going to die. And we, Yahweh Tazah, as, as uh, the brother was saying, that we that follow Yahweh Basham, uh, Yahweh Shah, Yahweh and his son, that we will have everlasting life, that we will be saved out of it. You know, that's, yeah, that's the, the faith that we have. And that's why I remember we are I was telling. On, I remember I was on Facebook posting scriptures and how America and how th these places are gonna be destroyed by terminal nuclear fire and stuff like that. And then this cat that I knew from back in the days, he said, "Listen, listen up, buddy. You know you will be destroyed then too, right?" And I said, "And that's where you're nope. wrong. <laughs> and that's where you're going on." I said, "There will be men delivered from that." Uh, uh, deleted friend, deleted, unfriended. you know. Unfriended. I was unfriended, yeah, unfriended, unfriended, instantly unfriended. Hey, but hey, that's what it is, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So, I have a, I have a scripture, okay. it's Matthew 24 and 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken yeah and that's going into the rulership of the the chaldeans the rulership of esau edom you know that's going to be shaken it's going to be brought low you know the arrogance of their pride is going to cease you know and that, that that's yeah. yeah because who are the 
who are the stars nowadays, okay? Actually, the stars represent uh, the Israelites. But guess what? In Isaiah, if you can grab that real quick, Isaiah 14, verse... Um, Verse 12? Yeah, 13 actually. Um, this is Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend to the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Yeah, so read it again. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Yeah, so Esau did that physically, but also spiritually he ascended into, uh, into heaven. Because mm -hmm. spiritually saying, he, he exalted himself above everything that is the most high. His children, but also the most high himself, like he thinks he better. Okay, read on. <clears throat> I will exalt my throne above the stars of the most high. Who are the stars of the Most High? The children of Israel, the Negros, Latinos, and Indianos. So he exalted himself above the Negros, Latinos, and Indianos, man. Talking about he better. He's the chosen people of the Most High. He is the image uh, of the Most High. But he's not, man. He lied. But now they did exalt themselves above us. So now they are the rulership. Okay? They are the stars from heaven. You see? Which they are trembling right now because they see destruction is nigh. That's why Satan know that he had but a short time. That's why he's doing all these things, man. That's why he's implementing all these things. This this vaccination passport and all this kind of crazy shit, man. Okay. That that uh, that video from Suriname is crazy, man. Like, hey, you you want to do things, yes or no? If, if you do, is that mm -hmm. the president? That's the president mm -hmm. speaking. Who's what is his name? Um, Bautista. No, no, no. That he he's gone because they had an election. Oh, really? Name. He's yeah. a coolie, this is, right? This is the new, yeah, he's yeah. the new president. Yeah. Santuki. Santuki. Fucking coolie, San man. Shut the fuck up, man. He say you better take it if you want to be able to move across the street, man. I'm like, what? This nigga crazy, man. But that's what they're doing, man. But hey, it says. Uh, Matthew 24 and 29 immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darker than the moon shall not give her light which represents the wisdom knowledge and understanding of this world that's going to be vanished okay like it says gross darkness is going to cover the people so they're not going to walk with understanding they're not going to walk with wisdom they ju just going to kill left and right the hand shall be in the side of the neighbor the sword in the neck okay invading mm -hmm. one another one another. Those are the things. That's why there's not going to be no light um, in the heads of the people. Um, and the star shall fall from heaven, which represents the rulership of Esau, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. They're going to tremble, man. They're going to be in terrible fear. Okay? Now, that's what's coming, man. Yalbat um, is Shai uh, is performing his miracles. He's um, uh, unfolding his prophecies. And Esau is seeing it because they diligently look at the prophets and what we are saying and what we are teaching and looking at the same time whether those things are true, man. Mm -hmm. It says yeah. that in the wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Let's see what he's going to say. Let's see what he's going to do. Yeah, Exactly. So, yeah, my, my, my phone is about to die. I have 4%. Let me see mm -hmm. if I can... I believe I have one last scripture. Make it quick because it's uh, one forty-four that we're live. So I want to show okay. shut it right now. Let's, <laughs> let's close. It. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut it down. Oh, no man. Um, Isaiah twenty-four and twenty. Twenty-four. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, twenty-four and ten. Isaiah chapter twenty-four. Let me start at eight. The mirth of Tabernacle. Let me read it for you. Let me read it for you. 
Isaiah 24, verse 8. The mirth of the tablet ceased, the noise of them that rejoice ended, the joy of the harp ceased. Yeah, which that's shall... happening already right now. All this pleasure and all this mirth is ceasing, man. Esau can't do shit no more. Not only Esau, the world can't do shit no more. Because this whole thing is being shut down by Al Bashem Yashai and the prophecy is unfolding, man. Okay? Murph is gone from the earth. Read on. Verse 9. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. Yeah, man. So even strong drink is not pleasurable no more, man. It's like, hey, you know, I remember this Jake from the world. Uh, you know, when I met him again, when I was a while in the truth, he said, well, where are you going? I said, I I'm going to buy this uh, this bottle of uh, liquor. He said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go home. He said, to do what? I said, to drink this bottle and just chill, man. He said, what? You go home with a bottle and drink at home and you're not planning to do nothing like go out to the club or something like that. Why you drink that bottle then? I said, because I just want to get high. What you talking about? He said, man, that goes with the alcoholism, man. You're drinking just to get high and you ain't going nowhere. It's no, there's no use of it. I said, man, get the fuck out of here, man. But nowadays, not even us, not even we can have pleasure in this liquor because we just sick and tired of this place, man. You see? Mm -hmm. So it's even going into that. Like we we might have we might have like a, a Borgu extra, okay? No advertisement, you know, I have to hide the label. We might drink something. But all you just get is a headache and be like, oh, fuck all this bullshit, man. You just get you just get irritated, man. It's we it's not the last time. Woman, huh? We had it the last time, remember, when you were here. You were talking about, yeah, it's better just to go to, to Abba, you know, then we have rest. Yeah. We but... were we were drinking wine, you know, talking about scriptures and stuff like that. But then yeah. like yeah, all of this is vanity and vexation of spirit. But yeah, exactly. we still got to go on. Yeah, we got to keep it moving, man. So even mm -hmm. us, like the world is is not having pleasure in this liquor no more and this drink, but uh, also us. Verse 10. Yeah, yeah. verse 10, please. <laughs> I thought I was saying. <laughs> the city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. Yeah, man. So the city of confusion is, is America, man. Because there's a bunch of confusion there, and it's only going to get worse and worse and worse. That's why darkness is going to cover the people. It's going to go wild as fuck, and people going to turn into nutcases until it, the whole place is shut down, man. Okay? Mm. It's broken down. Every house is shut up. No man may come in. Okay? There is a crying for wine in the streets, and joy is all joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. Yeah, man. So there's a crying for wine in the street, which that wine represents knowledge. They want to know what's going to happen. They want to know what, what, what what's going to be. What's going to be, man? Are things going to turn back to normal? That is that spirit that's going to be there. But they are not going to know anything, man. Just like what you see in, uh, like, for example, that movie, I Am Legend. Okay? Radio communication is gone. Are they still survivors? Are they still... They are going to be in fucking panic, man. They ain't going to know shit because nowadays they know everything, right? You know what freaking uh, Chong Li in China is doing, if you know him. You know what fucking um, uh, uh, Jose Aldo uh, is doing in uh, South America, okay? Meanwhile, you over here in Holland or wherever, man. So when that is taken away, people go crazy because now... Yeah. Communication is so so on a high level, so high frequent that when it gets when it gets taken away, people go crazy, man. They can't even drive to their jobs no more if they don't have their navigation system. You know? And that is all the work of Esau because Esau simplified the people and he he made them stupid actually. You don't know how to move from Rotterdam to Amsterdam without having your navigation system on. You see, Esau deliberately did that. Just so in those days, you don't know how to operate. You don't how, know how to move. Okay. Uh, and when I was in the military, we um, we had um, map mapping missions. 
you you need to go with your map and you need to pinpoint all the coordinates. And then I remember one time this guy said, why are we doing this if everyone, if the military consists of all these, um, te all this technology? Then my sergeant said, but what if it's gone? What if it's all shut down? Then you don't know how to fucking read a map. And I was looking, I was like, yeah, yeah, I understand. But still, I don't want to do this shit. Just give me the thing and let's just hope it doesn't shut down. <laughs> but yeah, e man. EMP. EMP. Boom. EMP, Nothing yeah, works. man. Yeah, man. EMP. Oh, now I see, uh, now I see the, the sign language. What we deep. Okay, yeah, man. You going to close it out? Yeah, you can close it out, Hark. So with that, we want to give all praises, glory, and the highest honor to Yahweh. Double honor to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect out there that's spreading this word of Sicilian and truth all over the four corners of the earth. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.